Hey everybody, it's Brendan Borman back for their 270 video. Today I'll be playing a multiplayer as James Monroe, the new candidate into 270. I'll be taking on Bernie Sanders, Shirley Chrisholm, Ted Cruz, and John McCain. Looking at James Monroe, he does have a 25% Old South, 25% Big Conservative. He has a 25% African American penalty, and he's a pretty standard um, Republican going up against Bernie Shirley, who has that 40% AA, John McCain, the big swing state bonus. He does have a vice president, which boosts his oil and gas and his big conservative. So going big conservative on turn number one is my goal, but it is a risk. And so if I only go one pip, that means I can still get it if I'm uncontested. If not, um, I've only wasted 100,000 and Ted Cruz and I clash. So not the most ideal. I am going to zero spin on turn number two. So let me read the new candidate Monday that was posted on the 270 Facebook Lounge by Nathan Williams. James Monroe was an American statesman, lawyer, diplomat, and founding father who served as the fifth president of the United States from 1817 to 1825. As a member of the Democratic Republican Party, Monroe was the last president of the Virginia dynasty, and his presidency coincided with the era of good feelings. Because Ted Cruz did go two pips into Texas, that does give me free reign to get the big conservative bonus, and I am going to open up into the Old South. Um, James Monroe, he was a um, governor of Virginia. He was the U.S. ambassador of France and Britain, the seventh secretary of state, and the eighth secretary of war. Born into a planter family in Westmoreland County, Virginia, Monroe served in the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War. After studying law under Thomas Jefferson from 1780 to 1783, he served as a delegate in the Continental Congress. As a delegate to the Virginia Ratifying Convention, Monroe opposed the ratification of the U.S. Constitution, and in 1719, he won election to the Senate, where he became a leader in the Democratic-Republican Party. He left the Senate in 1794 to serve as President George Washington's ambassador to France, but was recalled by Washington in 1796 where Monroe won election as the governor of Virginia in 1799 and strongly supported Jefferson's candidacy in the 1800 presidential election. Now, in this game, I am eyeing the swing state bonus as well as the Old South, but it did dawn on me that I forgot to go into Maryland, and we did clash in Florida. So not the best turn, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is pip up in Ohio and Pennsylvania, if I'm able to get those uncontested with Wisconsin, Virginia, and North Carolina, I can get swing, and I will secure Old South this turn. So let's just see how it plays out. New York, Bernie does get the high-tech bonus, and we are uncontested. So that's the Old South. Monroe does have a 15% swing state penalty, which is not good, but it is still a good bonus to have. So going back to the new candidate Monday, uh, Monroe helped negotiate the Louisiana Purchase, through which the United States nearly doubled in size. Monroe fell out with his long-term um, friend James Madison after Madison rejected the Monroe-Pinkley Treaty that Monroe negotiated. He unsuccessfully challenged Madison in the 1808 presidential election, but in April 1811, he joined Madison's administration as the Secretary of State. During the later stages of, war, of the War of 1812, Monroe simultaneously served as Madison's Secretary of State and the Secretary of War. His wartime leadership established him as Madison's heir apparent, and he easily defe defeated the Federalist Party candidate Rufus King in the 1816 U.S. presidential election. Monroe's presidency um, with the era of good feelings as the Federalist Party collapsed as a national political force. He signed the Missouri Compromise, which my home state, Missouri, became a slave state and Maine entered as a free state. In foreign affairs, Monroe and the Secretary of State John Quincy Adams favored a political of conciliation with Britain and a political of expansionism against the Spanish Empire. In the 1819 Adams, Onus Treaty with Spain, the United States secured Florida, 
and established its western border with New Spain. In 1823, Madison announced the U.S. opposition to any European intervention in the recently independent countries of the Americas with the Monroe Doctrine, which became a landmark in the American foreign policy. Monroe was a member of the American Colonization Society, which supported the colonization of Africa by freed slaves, and Libria's um, capital of Monrovia is named in his honor. Following his retirement in 1825, Monroe was plagued by financial difficulties, and he died on July 4th, 1831, in New York City. He has generally been considered an above-average president by historians. So what I'm doing here on turn number eight is I'm defending um, a little bit, <laughs> going finally going up in uh, Maryland gave me that Old South bonus. And then preemptive defense in Wisconsin, Ohio, and Pennsylvania is going to be a trend throughout this game as Bernie also decides to defend California. He did have to big spend here. So he defended Michigan, and he did have to defend Nevada. So I did put one pip into Nevada to make him use his Latino money. And the rest of this game will shake out as a pretty standard multiplayer. So I do have 94 electors. Um, with having, right now, Illinois, Cruz is able to keep that agriculture bonus and manufacturing. So maybe that's a state that I go after. I'm already in Arizona. I don't think either of those players, um, Shirley or McCain, will be in it for the long haul. So there's no need to waste my money and potentially clash. So I'm just going to zero spend here on turn number nine. Cruz locks Florida, which is good. Doesn't allow Bernie to get into that state. And now we're facing pressure in Louisiana from Shirley. And pressure in Pennsylvania from Cruz. And double pressure in Wisconsin. So going to have to start spending some of my money here. Luckily for us, Bernie does not even have Towning Gown out of New York. So we are kind of slightly holding a 3-2 to two bonus lead. I'm going to defend Pennsylvania. Defend and lock Wisconsin. And definitely defend Louisiana, which still leaves me over a million dollars. There will be a time where I pressure New York, especially California, but it's not that time... I am going to prioritize getting into Texas, but right now, Illinois is the big prize. So let's see if I can get in Illinois uncontested. Bernie did only spend 100 That might have been his, his – uh, yep, there is Illinois. And congratulations to the Alabama Crimson Tide for winning the national championship football game over Ohio State. So Shirley with 66 electors, most likely going to be the one who's eliminated. He could, um, she could backdoor eliminating McCain. But it looks like to be a three-horse race. And Cruz could be in a better spot if Bernie and I were kind of attacking each other. But I'm really going to hold off on that as long as I possibly can. Going to enter into Washington, Iowa, just some more Iowa because I have the swing state bonus, but make Bernie spend his Latino money in New Jersey, make him use his high-tech money in Washington. Another big spin by Bernie. Ooh, a big clash in Illinois. That helps out me tremendously. That opens up the path for me to take Illinois next turn. Because Bernie's going to have to defend some more of these states. So entering into Texas was a good move. And now Cruz will have to choose between defending Texas or defending Illinois. My money is that he defends Texas. So I'm going to lock 
Virginia, defend Maryland, defend Ohio with my swing. And then I'm going to go to the ninth pip in Illinois, just in case they there happens to be another clash or if Cruz goes all the way in, in Illinois, that's fine. I'd rather, as long as Bernie doesn't get it. I could lock Pennsylvania still. But I think I feel pretty confident with this this move. Okay, so Shirley taking some EVs from McCain, but we get the big haul with 20 EVs in Illinois. New Jersey is locked by Bernie. There goes his Latino money, which again is money he can't use in California or in New York. Virginia and Washington are both locked. It's 114 for us. 87 and Cruz have less than that. So I'm going to lock Maryland. I'm surprised Bernie's not in Pennsylvania yet, but that's okay. And I think the time has now come for me to enter into California and maybe even New York. Although I want to have as much money as possible to make it a credible threat. So let's hold off one more turn. Connecticut flips to Shirley. We secure Illinois. North Carolina entered in by Bernie. Clash in Tennessee. Big defense in Texas again. So that's the ballot, and there goes McCain. So that actually will help Shirley out the most. A lot of McCain states are going to go to her. However, she's going to have a tough time winning. She might keep surviving, but Bernie and I have a pretty tight lock on our states. Have $1.45 million in cash. Okay, now is the time to pressure California and New York. Thought about locking New Mexico or Iowa. And that's the end of turn 14. Still just a town and gown bonus for Shirley. Ted Cruz kind of in no man's land, and now with $1.4 million, it is a guessing game for Bernie. He hopes that I will go for a big steal and we will clash. But what's going to happen is that I'm just going to keep low spending here. He does take Kansas. Defends New York by one. Oh, no, and Cruz pulls off the Pennsylvania steal. Gets manufacturing and steals our swing state bonus. Good move. Zero excuse for me letting that happen. But now I need to, uh, because that's a big EV haul, I need to um, kind of get that back in the Old South. I'm going to go ahead and pip up to the third pip in Texas so that if Cruz is eliminated, I'll get that state. And then I'm going to make sure I'm entered into all of Cruz's states. And I think I'm going to let Pennsylvania get locked here. Okay, so no pressure in Georgia. Clash in Iowa with Cruz. Surely Chris Holm does forfeit, which opens the door for these open states, which maybe is not ideal. Because Cruz would have been eliminated um, a lot easier. Now he's got a path to some EVs, but I have a tremendous cash advantage, so 
I can't complain too, too much. The double pip a lot of these states, single pip states have already entered into. That leaves me $804,000 of cash. I could possibly get the swing state bonus. Could also, no, I can't get AA. So I'm going I'm to leave, leave Tennessee alone for now. Okay, so California's locked. New York's not far behind. And now I'm going to go up in Colorado, Iowa, New Hampshire, all the old South states to get that African-American bonus. And that'll do it. I'll save 855. Pressure in Colorado. We get New Hampshire. Do we get Tennessee? We do. Okay, so we should get AA. So there's Town and Gown for Bernie. Where's AA and Swing for James Monroe? Can lock Colorado and lock Iowa. And then now it's just a matter of waiting until one person is eliminated and then taking an advantage. So once Cruz is out, I'll get Florida, I'll have Texas, I'll have Pennsylvania, and I already have 212 EVs plus all this cash. So I should be sitting pretty. Secured Colorado. Secured Iowa. It's always good to avoid clashes in the late game of a multiplayer. New York is locked. <laughs> South Dakota clash. It's funny. So that's the end of turn 19. There is a ballot round. I'm going to go ahead and steal Connecticut because that will pretty much neutralize his high tech bonus. Um, assuming that, let's see, where else can he spend? He can spend it in um, Pennsylvania when it's unlocked and New Hampshire. So I need to lock New Hampshire next turn. So this will be the end of Ted Cruz as he defends Texas again. And with 125, he drops out. Uh, Bernie did get the oil and gas bonus, but he's not in Texas yet, so that's okay. $1.7 million total. Going to go to the third pip in Florida. Going up in these um, states that are very low pipped. I need to lock New Hampshire. 1.1 million. We're going to get ag and export at the end of this turn with Florida and with Texas. And so here comes the pressure. But we do have enough funds to just lock it. Clash in New Hampshire. And then I let him enter all the empty states since we already have ballot access. And so that will create the final ballot. It's just taking a look at where he is, closing off Arizona, Montana, Nebraska, Minnesota, Missouri, Arkansas with my Old South money, Tennessee, Kentucky, Manufacturing, Indiana, West Virginia, 
Might come down in Montana a little bit, just so I can go after some of these town and gallon states as well. Vermont, Rhode Island, Maine. And then I'll defend Florida by one. I'll leave Oregon alone. And that looks pretty good to me. So it's going up a couple more pips in Montana and Rhode Island, respectively. And here we go. I don't think Biden can flip anything here. We still Kentucky. New Hampshire is clashed. Vermont is James Monroe's. And West Virginia does go to Bernie Sanders. So about a final score of 339 to 199. James Monroe, the new candidate Monday, defeats Bernie Sanders. Congratulations to all the players, and thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next 270 video.